Okay, uh, question number one. This is chapter five review. Oh, and I'm in a crazy pen. Oh, I know it. Question number one. What is the centroid formula? Okay, Cent Okay, so I've got triangle ABC drawn. The centroid is found at the intersection point of the line that connects the vertice and the midpoint. You guys will all know what that means when you get home. You'll be like, oh, that's clear. Yeah, I like that. Crystal clear, Mr. Renault. That makes sense. Okay, so again, connecting the midpoint of the opposite side to the opposite vertex. So D is our centroid. Now, centroid formula, I want you to tell me, oh, I need to go further, E, F, G. Okay, I can use the centroid formula on all three of those lines. So I want to look at A, E. So use the centroid formula with AE and tell me what is a percentage of what? Go. Okay, so using the centroid formula or finding the centroid for AE, somebody talk to me. What are we going to have? What's my fraction that's in my centroid formula? Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay, so logically, looking at this, which one looks like it's two thirds of another one? AD. Okay, so AD is two-thirds of what? AE, the whole thing. Okay. So on your problems tomorrow, they're going to give you some numbers. Maybe they tell you DE is 4. If DE is 4, what's AD? 8. Okay, So because it would be two-thirds of the whole thing, which would be 12. Let's do, let's go ahead and do the other, the other two. What would BF be? Um, Zach Thomas, using BF, tell me the centroid formula. What do you got? BD is two-thirds of BF. I agree with that. And Maddie, give me the last one. That's going to be uh, CG. Give me the CG. Nope, 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 nope. You were in the right. You were going the right way. CG is two thirds of CG. Okay. So those are all the centroid formulas. How did you list it? Two thirds AE equals AD. How did, how did you list it? Oh, so you just change the letters. Yeah, that's fine. It's the same segment. It's just you have, yeah, not a problem. Is that question or was it the same question? No. Different question? Okay. All right, questions on centroid. Piece cake. Okay. Question number two. What I want you to do on number two is write an inequality based on the sides that we know. Okay, write an inequality based on the sides that we know. So you have to recall what the triangle inequality is. What section was that? 5-5. Okay, so what I see right away is I see the need to label all three angles. Okay, because then I know which side is greater than the other. All right, this is 145 degrees, which means this angle has to be what? 35 degrees. Okay, and so if this one is 60 and this one is 35, then what does this one have to be? 85. Again, as much as we would like to look at it and say that's a 90 degree angle, it may not be labeled that way. So you got to be very careful. Now we know which side is greater than the other side. So which one is greater than? Okay, so here's your inequality. 2 parenthesis x plus 6 is greater than y over 6. 
Now, if you are so mathematically inclined and you can't look at it that way and you have to do this, I'm okay with that. I can't leave the parentheses there, Mr. Renault. It drives me insane. I got to do the distributed property. That's fine. Either one of those is the exact same. Okay? Using the triangle inequality, you have to know the three angles or you have to know the three side lengths. Okay? To determine which the other ones are. Okay? Okay. Question number three. Again, staying with the triangle inequality. If you know all three of the sides, what I want you to do is list the angles in order from least to greatest. Okay? Angles in order from least to greatest. I think we got this. All right. Least to greatest. The smallest angle is which one? C. C. Okay, angle C is the smallest. Which is the second one? Angle A. angle A. And then obviously the last one is angle B. Okay, angle C, angle A, angle B in that order. Okay, number four. You've got a triangle. You know the sides are 12 and 18. I want the range of the side that could be side three. What's the smallest it could be? What's the greatest it could be? Okay, remember to use greater than less than signs. If you remember the rule, this will be very quick. Okay. Okay, shh. Carl, what you got? Shh. Tell me what your actual answer is, how you wrote it. Thirty. Okay. Is she right? Yes. Six is less than X, which is less than thirty. Absolutely. Okay. Shh. Okay. Number five. Okay. What I'm going to tell you is that AC bisects angle. Okay, angle A, excuse me, ray AC bisects angle BAD, the bad angle. Okay, what I want you to do is solve for X. <laughs> okay, shh. If I have, if I have a bisector, shh, if I have an angle bisector, tell me something about distance BC and distance CD. Anthony, they are congruent, okay? If you have a bisector, any point on that bisector, if you draw the distance to the other sides of the angle, remember distance has to be drawn to a 90 degree angle, that's why those are there, those will always be the same, okay? So, BD, excuse me, BC is congruent to CD, which means... 2x minus 8 equals x plus 12. Subtract x from both sides. Add 8 to both sides. What does x equal? 20. Now, things to consider. They might ask for x. They might ask for what's the actual side. So you substitute x back in okay, and find the actual side. Unfortunately, some of you, once you find X, you stop. A lot of the bonus questions this year, they've asked you to find something and then plug it back in, and you stop. Be very careful to answer what they are asking you. Okay? 